Breakdown. Is this video going to be controversial? Does anyone hate Breakdown? A con of a temper, but one who has over and over again demonstrated gentleness and kindness. Most of you watching already know his spark is good and might just be here to enjoy it all being said. Breakdown is not an evil character, and he was one that seemed set up for a major role change. Unfortunately, Breakdown's transition from Decepticon to Autobot never happened, with his demise at the hands of Arachnid. We will never know now how he might have settled in with the other Autobot characters, what Knockout would have done, what effect this would have had on the war. Some might bemoan the wasted potential that the Transformers Prime crew threw away, but what we certainly can do is look at Breakdown's personality traits and behavior and determine that Breakdown was the kindest Decepticon who could have been an Autobot better than some we already have. So maybe I should be speaking of breakdown in the past tense, but the present tense is much easier to go with when analyzing him. Let's treat breakdown as the concept of the character, which can never truly die. Huh. The primitive type. If anyone is going to point out a flaw in breakdown, they would point straight at his destructive tendencies. Literally in the name, breakdown loves smashing things and getting into a good brawl. He has a grand fun time in his rivalry with Bulkhead, and has no consideration for property damage. It does not take much to offend Breakdown and send him barreling towards you, but let's investigate if these traits mark him down as an evil Decepticon. We could ask ourselves if love of destruction is bad, as the opposite of creation. When we take joy in shattering glass or wrestling, I would consider this normal not an indicator of a dark personality. Bulkhead himself is equally excited as a breakdown about destruction, although he seems to know a lot about construction. Bulkhead loves movie fights, seeing monster trucks, crushing cars, playing rough sports, but no one questions him because these joys do not define a good bot from a bad one. Bulkhead would avoid damage to human property because he has an understanding of what grief he could cause, but Breakdown does not yet have this. We could talk about if he would have gained this later on. Furthermore. Bulkhead may claim that Breakdown is a Decepticon who has done bad deeds. <sighs> Miko, you don't understand. Breakdown and me, we go way back. You have no idea the things he's done. But he never appears to treat him with real hatred. Breakdown, likewise, does not act seriously in his battles with Bulkhead. Taking a look at Optimus and Megatron, or Starscream with RC, there's truly hatred and a want to kill the other. Breakdown does not seem focused on the kill. Although he does intend to kill Bulkhead, it is the fight that excites him. The very sight of each other sends them hurrying toward each other, ignoring all other enemies. Catch me if you can! I'll get him. Okay, you get him! The Big Fists share jokes and grin in battle, and Bulkhead certainly does not want to lose his brawl partner. <laughs> Mine's bigger. When Silas as Breakdown makes a return, Bulkhead is excited to see him again. Halen shows the Decepticon known as Breakdown at the scene. Haven't seen him in a while. Been itching to trade paint with you again. Where you been, Breakdown? In Operation Breakdown, after losing the Breakdown, Bulkhead does not want to help him, but might not expect Mech to kill him. He wants Breakdown to suffer perhaps, but Miko rouses him to save him by reminding Bulkhead of the thrill in fighting Breakdown. Breakdown's violence comes from two things, his playfulness and his past. From the games in bio, it seems that Breakdown used to be a paranoid and nervous bot. Now, he has come out of his shell of a stronger body. In Transformers Prime, he does not show fear, and he's constantly joking around with his pun partner in crime, Knockout. In fact, he loves the joke so much, he'll even squeeze one out at his own expense. I don't get it. All this chipping away with my hammer. Just to bring Megatron another hammer? Time to get a grip. He's a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Looks like the Autobots brought in a ringer. Well, then I'll ring his bell. I'm afraid our friend has had a little too much to think. Come to Papa. Run to Mommy. Say, Uncle. Say it. Heads, 
you lose. Megatron will peel our paint for losing that data. So we're gonna have to peel you. Or peel out of here. Breakdown, you'll never guess what I'm packing. Bumblebee's human friend. And when the Autobot attempts to stage a rescue, he has a breakdown. <laughs> not much for depth perception anymore, are you? Well, not much for looks anymore. <laughs>
It is my belief that since Breakdown is able to see the worth of vehicons, he would have quickly adapted to befriending humans. He has had little contact with them before, and then a completely negative experience when the terrorist mech dissect him and remove his optic. His aggression on the operating table is understandable, and he's not evil for wanting to squash the humans that captured him. In fact, killing humans in Transformers Prime is not a crime. This is what I like about the Autobots in Transformers Prime. They don't fear destroying humans if they are evil. The Autobots see evil as evil, no matter the body. The Autobots want to protect the race, but they will attack humans. In many cases, they scare and wound, but humans are surely getting killed from time to time. So now imagine placing Breakdown into the Autobot base and having the children meet him. I am quite confident that Breakdown could love Miko's medal as much as Bulkhead since they have similar tastes. He probably would not have gotten close to Jack or Rav, but I think if given the chance to speak of Miko, they would get along right away. June is a no, and as for Fowler, the only thing he might have liked was his random, silly exclamations. Alright, let's just add to the proof of how nice Breakdown is. Shippers are shaking in their seats because I'm going to talk about his closeness to Nako. All of the characters who are friends of each other seem to come into conflict at some point through arguments, but there is never a single moment in Transformers Prime where Nako and Breakdown become angry at one another. The two were traveling and living together solo for who knows how long before Starscream beckoned them. Most of the time, they're seen together, performing missions and constantly being chatty. The two have the same sense of humor, both enjoying cheesy lines in battle and apparently a love for being well polished, although only Knockout is vocal about it. Knockout is not around when Breakdown has started polishing Megatron, so he might have done it out of choice. And Knockout mentions that Breakdown is very good with the buffer, twice. Breakdown may act the brute, but he's a maestro behind a rotary buffer. <laughs> Detailing was so much easier when Breakdown was around. He reveals that he lets Breakdown polish his body, and Nako also compliments Breakdown to others, even when Breakdown is not there to hear it. You're real heavy duty, just like my friend here. You're no Breakdown, though I must confess I have always admired your lustrous finish. So yes, along with humor, they share the same fashion sense. And Knockout's statements about what Breakdown does for him reveals the best, and perhaps the only case, of physical affection among the Deceptors. Stop right there! I'm not telling you to read too much into this. Look at the Autobots, who behave like a family. There are many clips of them comforting each other, with touches and hugs, because Cybertronians like humans enjoy and, I would say, thrive with physical contact. But the Decepticon warship is a cold, cold place where the closest thing you can get to positive physical contact is surgery. Seriously, that or you have to have them been injured or abused just to get someone to touch you. Unless you're a certain dragon that craves pets. What Knockout and Breakdown do is the nicest thing that any two Decepticons do for each other for the sake of it. I also believe that the voice actor for Breakdown did a great job nailing that friend voice. Knockout. Starscream's been looking for you again. Where'd you go? Out for a little drive. Which sounds exactly like someone who is completely familiar and exasperated with the antics of their friend. And then he asks him what he's up to, sounding interested and curious for when apart he still wants to know what is going on. Although he has a temper and can be a brute, Breakdown really seems to be a gentle giant. The lightness he gets in the voice when he talks to Knockout privately when answering authority. Did you drop it, you one-eyed oaf? N no, master. I wasn't gonna touch the thing after it put the zap on Bulkhead. I will secure the weapon, Lord Megatron. Allow me to redeem myself, master. In a vehicon he felt for. Keep up the good work, huh? When Bulkhead helps him, I'll show that soft side. W what are you doing? Getting you out of here. We do know that Breakdown did not want to attack Bulkhead after he rescued him. The whole scene where they work together, where Breakdown heroically throws himself at Bulkhead to save him, where he protests briefly at Starscream's command, all made us wonder how long he would carry on as a Decepticon. Starstream did sway him with the logic that if Breakdown is a Decepticon, then Bulkhead will be his enemy after today, so there's no point in sparing the future threat now. 
Although when Starscream experiences this for himself, he ends up feeling differently. This episode actually set up a lot for Breakdown's character, and their intentions for him at that time might have been different. After all, Starscream's exchange at the end of the episode packed potential. Breakdown owed Starscream and learned that he had wanted to rescue him, not Megatron. Breakdown's camaraderie with Bulkhead and his development with Starscream, the writers easily could have pushed Breakdown ahead into a more important character. There could have been dramatic choices. In a sudden showdown between Megatron and Starscream, would Breakdown step in to help? What would Knockout have done in that case? Would there have been a split in the Decepticons as Soundwave aids Megatron? What if they had the flea? What if Starstream let down Breakdown in another instance so that in the showdown, Starstream calls for his help and is horrified when he does not receive it? What if other circumstances just push Breakdown toward the Autobots and we get to see him trying to fit in Armada Starstream style? Would a change of sides have been a deep conversation we see with Knockout as he attempts to sway him to join him? Gosh, this is fun, isn't it? But it has a lot of people feeling more disappointed. Did we lose too much when he died? Was Breakdown's build-up a waste? Breakdown's death in the episode that occurred did not make a large impact on the Decepticons. We never get to see Knockout's initial reaction to hearing of his death. We only get to see the excitement and then unease on his face when he sees Silas as Breakdown later on, and then some rage over Silas using his corpse. With Breakdown, Mech receives a Cybertronian body, but what's this necessary for writing? Now this portion of the video is more personal, for I'm not too bothered by the decision to kill Breakdown as far as the plot goes. I loved Breakdown, I loved how friendly he was, and his brutal death made me sad. By the way, there was supposed to be blood, but I assume it was censored out. Anyway, we cannot truly blame Arachnid when he had been, in fact, sent to kill her, so I'm not upset at her. And I'm not going to lie, what they do with Breakdown's death is incredible. Cliffjumper's death also meant something, especially for R.C.'s character, whereas Dreadwing's hardly led to anything. He gets shot through the spark, and then we never see his body again, and no one mentions his very name in Season 3. We don't even get the Autobots wondering if anything bad happened to him. But Breakdown's death led to some dark shit, and let me just say that I love the dark shit. We have a human living inside the corpse of a beloved character who horrifies those who view him, this cyborg corpse creature murders his entire crew who had saved his life in one of the darkest moments of this show. That is the end of Mech. But I now seem more suited to keep the exclusive company of Titans. And then Silas and Breakdown becomes a test subject of Knockout. That was a pleasant surprise. I had assumed like with Dreadwing's body, Silas had been killed and we weren't going to hear from him again. But we did, and it was a bloody cool episode. Knockout is revealed to have been experimenting on him for months, torturing someone who he cannot see as his former friend. And then Breakdown becomes this cyborg vampire zombie monstrosity that kills off half the crew, leads to the release of Arachnid, the loss of the Insecticons, and the Autobots being able to take over the Nemesis and win the war. Seeing Breakdown become an Autobot would have been a treat, because who doesn't enjoy the concept of the Decepticon being accepted by wary Autobots? Nevertheless, we got a zombie apocalypse scenario on the warship, and some very memorable dark moments. I believe my point is that it isn't always bad that characters are built up and killed off. It is okay sometimes to build our expectations and then shock us so that we don't know what is coming. We wouldn't want a fully predictable show, and someone watching season 1 would have never expected that this terrorist leader would occupy the corpse of Breakdown and become a freaking vampire. Is Transformers Prime missing opportunities? Yes, I believe that we could have had a deeper show. I personally would have wanted more scenes of Decepticons showing emotional vulnerability. But sometimes the writers are forced to comply with toy demands, so perhaps they could only make the best out of Breakdown's death as they made way for the new Decepticon, Dreadwing. In the end, I am at peace with Breakdown's death. He most certainly shown when he lived. 
and he had such an impact that the fans are not going to forget this kind Decepticon anytime soon. So continue buffing. We do want Megatron looking his best for the memorial. Buff this. You are bad guy, but this does not mean you're bad guy. Hey, it's me, Emperor Kumko. I am so thankful to have surpassed 3,000 subscribers. And I was thinking that if we could get up to 5,000 subscribers, I would start taking a look into these books and perhaps review and summarize the first book of the Transformers Prime novels, Exodus.